most of the, your common polymers that are fairly uh, hydrophobic in nature. And the whole idea is we'd like to move across the continuum that I've shown in the, uh, the third box on the page. On the far left-hand side is a cartoon which shows what would happen if you blended a sodium clay into a polymer. You typically get just a face separated agglomeration of clay. What we'd like to do is try and get some polymer in between the clay plates, which is called an intercalated state, most preferably move all the way to the right, and get the individual plates of high aspect ratio dispersed in the polymer. Now, this has been tried for about 20 years, and the only great commercial success has been obtained in the case of nylon 6, and even there, only in a special case where the polycaprolactam uh, has the clay incorporated during polymerization. If one simply milk compounds uh, these organoclays, uh, you typically get at best only partial exfoliation. You may wind up in the middle of this diagram, or even worse, start back at the left. And so your property enhancements fall significantly below your theoretical expectations. Uh, the reference on the bottom is uh, by Toyota researchers who first pioneered this approach in Nylon 6, and they've written a nice review, which summarizes 20 years of work and trying to achieve the success in other uh, polymer blend systems. So as I mentioned, uh, polystyrene blends are very important to uh, applications of PPE. And so we decided to look into the literature of, of what people have done with nanoclays in polystyrene uh, to get some clues uh, and some leads on how we might approach it. Uh, being a commodity polymer uh, and also uh, also being able to polymerize it by a number of free radical routes. There is a lot of literature. I've only put a few of the key references on this page to illustrate the approaches. On the reference at the top, uh, Wilkie et al. explored melt blending polystyrene with conventional organoclays. And as I uh, stated, you typically find a mixture